Hi, welcome to this video about lowering a horizon in a photo. This photo belongs to Helena from the United States and she told me that she was actually considering trashing this photo because she didn't like the way the horizon cut through the subject's neck and I get that but I said to her, no, it's quite possible to lower the horizon to more of the shoulder line and that should make it a bit more attractive. Now, Helena wisely asked me about this after she'd done her raw processing but before she'd done any Photoshop work. She hasn't done any levels editing on this and that's the right thing to do. You have to do this kind of major pixel editing before you start getting into your adjustments in Photoshop. Um, so if this photo appears a little bit flat and dull to you, that's why, because it's only had raw processing done so far. This is a perfect raw edit. Now, what I'm going to show you um, involves a few different processes all in one. None of them by themselves are particularly complex, but you put them all together and uh, it gets a bit complicated. So let's see how we go. The first thing to do is to duplicate the layer and completely clone out the subject on that layer. Um, and fortunately that will be quite easy to do on this photo uh, because the background is pretty blurred, you know, so I can get away with um, oops, some fairly carefree and dare I say even dodgy cloning. Okay, that's easily a good enough clone job for what I need here. Now, the next thing will be to turn that layer into a smart object. Uh, Elements users, if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you don't have that functionality. It's not the end of the world, um, but it sure does make things a little bit safer. So Photoshop users, make sure you use smart objects um, when you know you're going to transform something which I am certainly going to about to do here. Um, now what I might do is just um, add a mask to this layer, just a very loose cutout around the subject. Um, and so sometimes for photos like this it's possible just to warp the whole background and sort of stretch the horizon down and stretch the sky down with it. Um, I might just show you that really quickly and roughly. Uh, yeah, sorry, unlink the layer mask. Let's try that again. Go to warp. Um, now just Okay, this is going to be really rough. Just bring that down. Yeah, okay, it's a bit bowed and whatnot, but um, what I wanted to show you was now the horizon is going through more of that shoulder line. That's good, but this would be a nightmare to mask around the hair because the color of the moved sky is so much different from the color of the existing sky. So actually, I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm going to take what will seem at face value to be a slightly harder route, but it'll be easier for the nitty gritty masking around the hair. So I'm just going to do a plain transform and I'm just going to drag from the top and squash it down um, until I've got it about uh, maybe just a smidge below her shoulder line there for the new horizon and I'll commit that. So now it's time to just start Oops, the masking and 
again, as I said, because the background is so blurred, um, that's it's easier on this photo than it would be on a photo where the um, background is more in focus. So thank you, Helena, for choosing a lovely out of focus background for this. Around her shoulders, I'm going to need to do a little bit of fairly careful zoomed in masking. Okay, so that's good enough for now. Don't need to worry about around the hair yet, because what I'm going to do is put a new sky in there. So that's the next step. Um, I'm going to make a selection. I'll include um, a link below this video, more about gradients, explaining a bit more about what I'm about to do here. So I uh, just need to line these colors up to where I want them to be. That color starting at the bottom. I like to begin with some completely outrageous colors so I can see exactly how I need them to be. Then I change them. to how I want them. Now that clearly didn't work. That's more like it. Okay, that might need to be just tweaked a bit. Great. Okay, always make sure your dither is turned on with any gradient. Um, and in this case, turn off align with layer. I've talked before how Align with layer is very misleading. What it really means is align with mask. And in fact, if I do want it to align with the layer, that is the whole image, um, I have to turn that off. <laughs> I know, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So. Now I can apply that gradient to make whoops, my new sky. And hope that I've done a good enough job of choosing the colors that it should blend in fairly seamlessly. There's a real art to picking gradient colors and it does take some practice. Don't feel bad if you don't get the hang of it right away. It'll come. Okay. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. I've made a new sky that pr lines up pretty beautifully with the colors that are already around her head. And by doing that, it means it cuts down on some of the tedious masking. Now, it doesn't eliminate the tedious masking altogether. Um, I do still have some more of that to do. I just noticed this bit of masking I missed on this layer. So I'll just come back to here and I'll fix that up now. Okay, thanks for bearing with me there. Right, now I'm going to keep going masking on my gradient layer. Now, as much as possible I like to try to avoid giving subjects haircuts, but it will be necessary to give her a little bit of a haircut in this photo, I'm afraid. It's, uh, a few of those strays will have to go. Um, but because... Oops. Because I've done a fairly good job of matching the colours, all these strays up here can more or less stay, um, but some of these 
will have to go just because it's not worth the effort of trying to mask around them, you know. Just missed a bit of my sky blending here. Okay, so haircut time. Uh, just when you're doing this kind of stuff, for heaven's sake, make sure you always use the shift key. I'll include a link to that below this video as well. So important. Now, maybe around to there. Is that enough for haircut? Let me just zoom out and take a bit of a look. I forgot to consult with Helena on this. It's possible that she might like to get rid of all of these hairs here. Um, but uh, look, for now I'll, I'll leave them in. Helena, when you're watching this, you would just keep masking up there to get rid of the rest of the hairs if that's what you wanted. Okay, now I've got a bit more tedious masking to do around this neck. Okay, that's that side done. Now the other side. And here's where we come to the final complexity here because there's no way I can mask around that and it would look bad if I tried to give it a haircut. It would be probably an awful straight edge that really doesn't work. So instead, I'm going to try to borrow this curve of hair up here. I'm going to turn off those other layers for now, return to the background layer. Uh, select this big chunk, maybe that's not enough. Put that onto its own layer. And again, um, whoops, make this a smart object because I know I'm going to be rotating it. Again, Elements users, not the end of the world that you can't do this, but um, it just does add a bit of safety to the procedure. Now, I'm going to see if I can line this up plausibly here. My goal will be to try and make the this hair blend in. Um, let's see how I go. It's always a bit risky doing this kind of thing on video. What if I mess it up? So far so good. What do I always say about Photoshop editing like this is it doesn't have to be perfect just has to look okay, you know. just has to pass casual scrutiny. Now, you will know that I've done this. You'll probably be looking at this area of hair and going, yeah, that looks joined up, Damien. But, really what we want is for the average punter to look at this after the photo's completed and hanging on a wall and not even glance at this area not even give the hair a second thought. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to get away with it. Okay, let's have a look how I've gone here. I'll turn that layer off and on. What do you think? Yeah, you know, it's not perfect. We can see some ends of hair there that don't quite make sense. But I think that the casual observer won't notice anything. All right, so now let me turn my other layers back on. And I can just blend this gradient in here. Miss this bit. Just come down there. Um, I'll just lighten those strands a little. How am I doing here? And just 
blend this through here now let's have a look at the whole thing okay I can see that my gradient layer I was a bit careless with my mask and it's lightened her hair up the top here very slightly I can't stress enough the importance of checking your layers turning them off and on a few times after you've finished or think you've finished something because you'll catch little mistakes like that ah, it's still, still there and maybe a bit over there all right darn it still with the hair Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, I can't see anything I've missed. Hopefully you can't either. <laughs> um, and I hope you like that outcome. Now there is another thing to do. Um, it's really important to always clip a pattern layer, a noise layer, um, to a gradient layer. Um, Linear light, just to prevent banding. I'll include a link about that underneath the video as well. Uh, you won't be able to see that pattern, but it just prevents banding, as I said. All right, so that's the outcome of the horizon move. I hope you think it looks plausible, and I hope you might find this useful at some stage.